Hi Tubies, today we bring you a profound and touching story that sheds light on the life of a dedicated police officer named Raja. We want to share this account with you to honor his memory, but also to address some important issues within law enforcement organizations and mental health support for those who serve our communities. Raja was a highly disciplined and passionate police officer, who took great pride in his duty to serve and protect the public. From the beginning of his career as a patrol officer during his national service in 2007, he was determined to excel and become a regular officer. To achieve this goal, he invested years in obtaining the necessary qualifications and even went the extra mile to maintain a gold IPPT standard through rigorous physical training. In 2012, Raja's dream came true, and he was posted to Ang Mo KIO Police Division. Throughout his career, he demonstrated a strong sense of discipline, professionalism, and integrity. He was deeply committed to the ideals of policing and tirelessly fought crime, staying dedicated to his duty even when off duty. Despite his unwavering commitment to his profession, Raja faced significant challenges and hardships during his time in the force. In 2015, he found himself in a difficult situation after reporting a racial slur made by his team leader. Unfortunately, his teammates did not support him, and the team leader faced no consequences. Raja felt isolated and requested a transfer, which was denied, exacerbating his anxiety and sleep issues. Adding to his troubles, Raja was also caring for his mother, who was recovering from a brain injury. His personal life became intertwined with the stress at work, making it difficult for him to cope. He endured two surgeries during this time, adding to his physical and emotional burdens. In December 2015, Raja faced an appalling incident when his commanding officer questioned the validity of his medical conditions, used vulgarities against him, and even asked him to resign. This incident led to an investigation against the CO but the stress and uncertainty worsened Raja's mental state. Despite reporting his challenges to higher management and seeking help through the Police Psychological Services Division, Raja's difficulties persisted. He was even referred to the Internal Affairs Office for an investigation based on false allegations. The prolonged surveillance during his recovery from surgeries and the prospect of returning to the same abrasive CO further eroded his morale and well-being. Raja's life story is a testament to his resilience, but it also sheds light on some concerning aspects within the law enforcement profession. Whistleblowing and standing up against superiors can lead to retaliation and obstacles in one's career, which is an issue that needs addressing in any organization. Moreover, Raja's story reminds us of the importance of mental health support for police officers and the need to create a safe environment where they can seek help without fear of repercussions. The stresses of law enforcement work, exposure to trauma, and the weight of responsibilities can take a severe toll on an officer's mental well-being. We must ensure they have access to resources and support to cope with these challenges. As we remember Raja and the difficult path he walked, let us reflect on how we can make positive changes in our communities. If you found this story moving or thought-provoking, we kindly ask you to leave your comments below, like this video, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel to stay informed about similar stories and important topics. Thank you for being a part of this discussion, and together, Let's work towards a society that cares for those who dedicate their lives to keeping us safe. Before we end this video, we'll like to read the post made by friend and ex-colleague, Raj Noga on Facebook. I first met Raja when he was serving his national service as a patrol officer in 2007. I remember the team he served in was filled with officers we now call legends due to their crime-busting skills. This is where he was inspired to become a regular officer. In order to sign on after completing his NS, Raja spent some years obtaining the qualifications needed. He conducted his own physical training to obtain a gold IPPT standard just so his application would stand out. In 2012, he fulfilled his dream and was posted to Ang Mokyo Police Division. 
I recall he spent a number of years in a plain clothes unit when he joined as a regular officer. Sometime around 2015, he was transferred to patrol duties to Ang Mokyo North Neighborhood Police Station. At the time, I had a secondary appointment as a senior paracounselor at Ang Mokyo Police Division. In December 2015, on his own accord, he approached me seeking help with some issues he was facing at work, and I officially took on his case after referring the matter to my chief paracounselor. As his assigned paracounselor, my duty was to provide a listening ear and guide him towards developing his own solutions. Raja faced difficulties at work, leading to anxiety attacks and trouble sleeping. He was also caring for his mother who was recovering from a brain injury. In early 2015, he argued with his team leader over a racial slur and reported the matter to his commanding officer, Ko. However, he faced conflicts with his teammates who did not back him up and the team leader was not held accountable. He felt ostracized by his teammates and his request to transfer out was rejected. During this time, he faced sleep and anxiety issues, took no pay leave to care for his mother and underwent two surgeries for a lump on his leg and a deviated septum in his nose. In December 2015, Rajas Ko recalled him back to the office whilst he was on medical leave and questioned the validity of his medical conditions, used vulgarities against him and shouted at him to resign. This incident stressed him, leading to an investigation against the Ko. He sought to transfer to another department and was assured by the division deputy commander that it would happen. However, his morale dropped when he received a low-performance grade and his transfer was turned down. Due to his continued medical conditions, he incurred repeated medical and no-pay leave extensions until April 2016. He communicated his distrust towards management to me and I referred his matter to the Police Psychological Services Division. During this time, the division commander attempted to have Raja's employment terminated but it was rejected on the grounds that his medical condition was genuine. The division commander then referred him to the Internal Affairs Office for investigation in December 2016 for not staying indoors during medical leave, despite the fact that Raja was actually on no pay leave. That investigation concluded with no further action being taken against him. However, the stress of the baseless investigation and the prospect of returning to the same coerced his morale and sleep troubles. I struggle to relive the bitter memories and the sheer abuse of authority he faced. It is a testament to Raja's strong resolve and mental fortitude that he endured the prolonged surveillance throughout his recovery from his surgeries. But there is only so much that the human mind can take. What is mind-boggling is that despite all the reports made to higher management, Raja was posted back to the same co who continued to be abrasive towards him long after I had left the force. Raja used to tell me his motivation to succeed was so that he could look after his wheelchair-bound mother who suffered from long-term physical and mental ailments. I still have a message he sent me in 2014 when he described growing up with an alcoholic father who left him and his siblings in debt. He had to work part-time as a car washer for school pocket money when he was 14 and he was confident that he would overcome the setbacks at work to make something of himself. From here onwards, these words are purely my opinion. Raja may have made mistakes during his time in the force, but who hasn't? Everything he ever did as a police officer was in pursuit of ideals that he held dear. In a perfect society, his sense of discipline and professionalism would have been desired and rewarded. Unfortunately, in my opinion, 
He destroyed his career when he first blew the whistle against his superiors. No officer deserves to be held back and thumbed down for so long. And yet, it happened. When I first became a police officer, I was taught to always hope and pray that my colleagues and I would have long, fulfilling careers without injury or death. From the day we start training, we hear stories of officers who have either died in the line of duty or died by their own hand due to the stresses caused by the nature of the work. Somewhere along the way, we stop looking out for each other and become obsessed about our own career. We are paralyzed by invasions into our privacy, silenced by fear of repercussion and turn deaf to the voices crying out for help. Raja left us wearing his full operational uniform. He embodied the ideology of C.L.I.F. for as long as he could. He showed courage in the face of discrimination. He was unwaveringly loyal to the force. His integrity never faltered even when he was shamed and his fairness towards his fellow officer was not reciprocated. Farewell SGTT 12387, see you at the end of the shift.